Welcome to another episode of Dice and Kit. Lord Trial 27, your DM for the evening. And this is our lovely new layout. Got all of our players here ready to go. Thank you, Best Designs, once again for doing another one of our layouts. All of our overlays are done by her. Uh, a bunch of our other things are done by her as well. So another amazing job here and with that last time on a special friday episode uh due to extra life event our ragtag group of idle hands found themselves in a forest uh searching for a werewolf that they had been alerted of which they never did find however they did discover a group of mushroom people and a trapped fairy. Uh, they went about rescuing said fairy. Took some experimentation. They figured out how to do it. And we're all granted sweet level 6. And each will be obtaining a special feat as well. They returned back to the wagons and realized that much more time had passed than they had realized. Being in that trapped area, they uh, did not think much time had passed at all. So they settled in for a night, nice peaceful day, feeling good about their accomplishments. And with the toy maker saying he would take first watch, party finds himself drifting off to sleep. With that being said, I need everyone to roll initiative. Oh, You're starting right, off right. with initiative already? So the lowest okay. goes first, right? That, that, that's how it works. Nope. It does not. <laughs> I think my I think my cat stepped on my keyboard for that. Yes. yes. <laughs> it's like, you already have yours. Um, with that, everyone, I need everyone Except for Frost, aka Claire. It's mute and deafened for me. Here we are again. Claire, once more. As strange as it is, you find yourself asleep. You decide to rest your eye, new eyes for a moment. And you find yourself walking through some caves. Large mushrooms. Casting a faint blue and purple light. Hear a voice. Claire. So nice of you to join me. And might I ask who you are? Figure steps out from Patch of Darkness. That's right. You wouldn't recognize me anyway. How are those new eyes treating you? It's a bit overwhelming. But I think I'm getting used to it. I've been hmm. enjoying looking up at the stars. I think it might become a hobby. You see an older gentleman standing in front of you with a katana strapped to his side, simple robes. Is that you, Sebastian? Uh, you'll have to forgive me. I've never seen you before. It's long wisps of white hair. Kind of smiles. And you see, as he smiles, the skin on his face grows tight, clinging to bone. I suppose that does make me Sebastian. Bit out there, but did I ever really train with an old man? Out in the woods in his cabin. Would you like to see the cabin? And thing. I can show you. I would. But everything has a cost. And what would the cost be? See the figure take their right hand. And darkness begins to swarm around it. Path of the night is not an easy one. 
And it's funny how gifts can come and go. Do you wish to see? Are you telling me that I'll lose my new eyes? Possibly. If I want to know the truth? I can always... Price is not always clear. It's just possibilities. Could alter your mind. Could mess with your sight. Because I will be pulling a memory. But now, since you have eyes, you'll be able to see the memory. I've been in the dark for so long, both from a visual perspective, as well as knowing my past. It's a tough decision, but yes, I would like to know the truth. Then the truth you shall know. And as the hand of dark comes towards you, and towards your face. You swear for a moment, you see him smile again. And it's nothing but sharp teeth. You go to close your eyes away from the dark. And you open them again. And you are back at the cabin. It's a spring evening. You're outside. Training dummy in front of you. You can hear distant thunder. And the smell of burning food. Remember this day. They always played out funny in the back of your head. It's the only day that you remember ever smelling burnt food. What do you wish to do? Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over and see and take the food up, off the fire. You'd have to go inside. I'm gonna go inside then, yes. You go inside the little cabin. Simple furnishings. Uh, there's a wood-framed couch and chair by a fireplace. All the cooking happens. A couple beds off to the side. You notice the food, the stew, and the fire bubbling over. No sign of Sebastian near the fireplace. You see the flames begin to cut the simmer down. The flames, the wood and the fire... Seems to be well spent, and then you don't see any other wood nearby. I, Claire, Claire's, I'm going to ye yell out the door. Sebastian? There is no answer. Are you there? Silence. I'm gonna, t I'm gonna try and take the food, food off of the, off of the, uh, the fire, keep it from burning more. All right. You see uh, some cloth near the fireplace. You pick it up and use it to grab the iron pole in which the stew pot hangs on, and you swing it out of the fireplace. What do you wish to do now? And try to rack, try to rack my brain to think, think of if Sebastian had said if he was going anywhere today. No, never much traveled out. Always made a big deal of it when he did. Always had things prepped for you if he ever left. And your eyes go back to the dying I'm gonna go fire. back outside. See if I can find any signs. Head out front. You see the small little garden off to your left. Just been tilled up. Plants being planted. See a couple of training dummies over to your right. A small shed with a little, little barn that houses the mule and a couple of animals, a couple of chickens, cow, and the shed of tools. You notice the shed door is open. I'm going to go to the shed. Sebastian usually locks that up. You open it up just the way, and you see that the 
And he has a neat spot for everything. And you remember just by feel, being able to tell where each tool was. And you see that the axe is missing. Must have gone out to get firewood. And you recall there is a chopping block. We usually split wood. We usually he usually splits wood behind the house. I'm gonna go behind the house to check if he's there. All right, you pass by the little outhouse you all have set up, and you see the now somewhat familiar frame, an old man. Though the face much fuller, standing, axe dropped off to the side. It's on the edge of the woods, just staring. Hand out. And then from within the trees, you see a dark arm reach out. Come, Sebastian. You know, I have what you desire. Come willingly, or I can always give it to you by force. And you see Sebastian's get, eyes try, try and get in front of some. go big, and he just walks forward, eyes wide in fright. And as you go to try to step in between him. You can't move. It's like you're rooted in place. And you look to your right, and then to your left, and you see the slim Sebastian standing, smiling at you. Go on. You wish to know. Don't take your eyes away. You turn back over and you see Sebastian closer to the edge of the trees. And you feel the ground move as a large figure steps out. Horned face, two large horns turning out of their head. Small horns like facial hair running down the sides of their face. Large yellow eyes, two Wings arched up on its back. You wish to be the darkness, Sebastian. Well, here it is. And as the large figure reaches out its hand with the sharp nails, you see the skin is all scale-like. And you see this dark energy just come out and consume Sebastian. And you watch as this large form becomes part of the darkness itself and seeps into him. Sebastian collapses to the ground. Sebastian! Sebastian! And his face is looking towards you, eyes open. Mouth wide open. And you see the dark mist come out of his mouth. Between you and his body. And it begins to gather and form. Into a much more frail, thin version of himself. You see him look down. This body will do my slay. And as he picks up some wood and heads to the house, you see nothing but ash where Sebastian's body was. No. Poor Sebastian. Didn't want to give in to the darkness. Not like you. 
not like you. You... <laughs> You've made a rather fine pet. Ever since your creation. Aileen's in close. I know what you were before. And you have me to thank for what you've become. <laughs> How have I given into the darkness? Everything that I do is to help people. Hmm. And yet even now, I feel that spark has been ignited. Consumer of dark things. What do you think happens when you consume the dark? Like you did today. What do you think will become of you? Whatever it is. I know I have to hurry before it completely overtakes me. <laughs> oh, dear pet. You think with eyes you have gotten bravery. That fairy may be able to stop the lesser of my kin. However, my power is darkness itself. And to be the darkness, you must live in the darkness. And then everything goes black. And you find yourself floating. Can't see anything. Just have the sensation of floating in a slimy gunk. And there's something familiar about this sensation. But you can't quite place it. And now with the world black, so too is your thought. As you go unconscious once again. And I'm going to have you mutant deaf in one and I'll I bring Bunny back. Okie doke. Hello, Genevieve. You drift off. After having a nice smoke on, on your own pipe. And a nice meal. With some... Stuff I got from Toy Maker, right? Yep. Some potentially new friends, maybe. And... Maybe. You... Drift off. And quickly find yourself... Sitting at a bar, you forget which one, you've seen so many now. And you're at a corner stall, circular table before you. And you can see the outline of a figure sitting in front of you. And they reach out for a drink. As they lean forward to reach out for a drink, you recognize your old captain. Your dark ebony skin braids. What are you doing on dry land? It's been a while. Same as you, dear. How's Cass? Well, as well as we can be, being stuck here. When the sea calls our names. Yeah. It's taken me a while to kind of come to grips with that personally. I love I love the sea. I love going out there. But right now I'm I'm doing some really important stuff inland. It'll all work out though. So wait, are you 
I guess... How long have you been here? Well... Kinda had to give up on the ship for a bit. So I've been traveling. I'd say... I'd say maybe a month, month and a half now? I've been looking for you. You have? Yes. Can I... Can I do an insight check to see if this is actually my captain? Sure thing. Alright. So, you're pretty familiar with the mannerisms of your captain. And the way they move to fetch their drink, and the way they lean on the table while drinking it, and their speech patterns all seem right. Maybe a little too perfect. But one thing that doesn't quite add up is the amount that they're smiling as they talk with you. She was never one to smile a ton unless it was someone she was trying to pull the wool over their eyes. Made them feel more comfortable. She never really talked that way with you. So... I'm gonna act like I didn't clock that. Okay. Do I need to roll for it? Not currently. Okay. A month, wow. So, I mean, what all is left to fix on the ship? Not that I'm super itching to go right now, although I am a little bit. But I know, hey, you does better on the ocean. They get into less trouble. Well, you see, some folks found out who the ship belonged to. And the government said they needed more ships. And so the ship is fixed. It just... isn't ours anymore. So wait, does that mean that... Does that mean that the fortune's been pressed into service? It would appear that way. I try to work my charms. I don't see reason, but... It appears I was not as good with my charms as I expected. One of them saw right through it. Had to leave town rather quickly. That's rough. I can imagine. So like, so who, who all, who all got out besides you? Did Pickles get out? Pickles is dead, don't you remember? Oh, right. Yeah, sorry. I must have spent so long. I know, it was a stressful day that day. It's been a long time. I did lose a few people that day. No. Uh, after you left, most of the crew left afterward. So mm. you were already on bare bones at that point then. So they probably just got the vessel. Yeah. Now, as you know, first mate mm. hardly left my side. However, when I was found out, I was alone. So I don't even know where he is currently. You don't know where Cass is? At all? No. Could still be in the city. Could be in a jail cell somewhere. He'll get out of it. Um. Huh. And this was a month ago? Yeah. I was gonna go to Dim Meadow because it seemed like a welcoming place for our type. But then I heard... On my way there about the happenings going on elsewhere that seemed a little troublesome, so I was like, maybe one of my old crew is stirring up trouble there. So I made my way 
to the Dorman lands instead. Only to find not one of my crew there. Just seems some Dorvin fight over the crown because of a sick king. Nothing rebellious in the ways of our rebellious. So then when I went to head north to the meadow, I found out about the uprising and the undead just a few days ago. Yeah, it it was all pretty. I haven't seen dead dead shambling like that in a hot minute. So what's your plan? What do you, what are we what are we doing? I mean, we if if Cass is in a jail cell, we should probably find him. Probably. Oh, I do have a few contacts around. I've sent a few out to other cities looking for the rest of the crew. Don't dare send any back there yet. I want to get a few more people together before I dare try to venture back into there, but... Right. Given time, I think everything will be... Quite all right. Oh, Genevieve, you've barely touched your drink. It's it's the strangest thing. I actually... I don't even remember ordering it. I must be tired. <laughs> yes. Oh. Traveling as well does. I'm too tired to enjoy that. Yeah. How are you sitting right now? How am I sitting? Yep. The DM asking I'm, you. I've I'm Yeah. So Genevieve is sitting this is a table. I'm sitting on the chair. I have short legs because I am in fact a halfling. Um so I've got my I've got my boots kind of perched to jump off. Should I need to? Okay. And I've got one hand on the table. And one hand on, on sort of like my thigh, so I could reach up to my hip if I need to. Right, just kind of looks. Just like very casually, ca looking pretty casual, but ready. As she's been talking, you haven't noticed. She's reached out, and now she touches your hand. It's on the table. You always were um, a good one. To hey you, I hope they are faring well in your care. She moves her Always. hand. Always. And you feel new kind of sensation. About yourself. What? Like a physical sensation? Yeah, or... like a spark that's been lit. I always try to do the right thing as far as as far as Hey is concerned. You know he gets in a lot of trouble um trying to show off. But deep down he's good at following orders. And he keeps people happy. And happy people are less likely to revolt. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> yes. Yes, indeed. <clears throat> she kind of sits back. Your hands have always been one to guide them. And assist them when difficult times arise. She gives you a little wink. And as she does, you see her form kind of turn gaseous and a bunch of green and pink lights kind of disperse are they are they still there well they there and then they just or did they just like poof yep every time <laughs> <laughs> oh 
I'm gonna look around to see if I if this is a real bar or if I'm not. I'm trying to figure out if I should drink this this booze in front of me, or if that is a trap. <laughs> you see people sitting at tables. Eat or drink their their food. See people sitting at their tables having drinks. Uh, you see a woman with golden hair making her way to the stage. And you see a Goliath bartender getting some drinks, yelling out orders to the back room. Do I recognize anyone else in the bar? Uh, as you're looking Maybe around, a do a perception check for me. So you're looking through, and you don't immediately recognize anyone. But as you're looking up over where the, the bard is taking stage, you whip your head back around and do a double take. And she just seems to be readying her loot to play. But you swore she was staring right at you. And she begins to play a tune. And it's weird. You hear the words. But they resonate more with an emotion than words themselves. And the message you get is. Something about fate's guiding hand. And the spark to do what is necessary and then the room begins to fade away and your eyes feel oh so heavy I'm just kind of close them for just a minute just like two seconds and you fall back asleep my bearings. I'm gonna have you swap out with Felden Okay. Big things happening, folks. Big things happening. They don't realize it yet, but I think Claire might know. Eventually, all this will be out in the open, but for now, we're going to keep playing our little games with them. So, you drift off to sleep after a wonderful little meal, some laughs. And soon after, you find yourself. Sitting by a campfire. Up on a mountain. There's snow tracing the mountaintops, but it doesn't feel cold. And you have a great view of a valley with a river flowing through. And off in the distance, you hear the roaring of thunder and see flashes of lightning. And then you hear, Welcome, Belden. Hello. It's good to have you back again. Good to have you here. Where are... Where is here? A little place I've made. He looks around confused a little. Not anywhere in particular. Just a place. I like to come to think. Did something good today. And for that... Did something good. I shall reward you. Yes, you helped someone in need. Someone who... Wished to protect others. But could not protect themselves.
and you're gonna feel on the for on your forehead a large pointed talon just touch the tip of your just with the tip touches your forehead and as soon as it touches your forehead you feel a spark like something in yourself ignited and for a moment you see a very bright light that kind of shoots out and as it shoots out it seems to hit up against a large object in front of you and for the briefest of moments you can make out a very large scaled figure and then it's gone. I don't know what you did, but thank you. May your path ahead Be more visible to your eyes. The little trick you that helped guide your way may be a trick you can call upon again. Ellen just sits there and nods. He doesn't quite know what's going on. Can't quite gasp fully what's going on or what he just saw. Felt it. Hold out your necklace. Don't have to take it off. Just hold it up. Felder doesn't take it out. He just grabs it and holds it out like this so it's still dangling, but he's got it like wrapped around his neck so it's dangling like this. He doesn't actually touch the metal. You hear a slight tink as something... Just taps your necklace. And you see around the edge where this large coin sets it begins to glow. What's going on here? Felden grabs it and looks back up at it. Remove the coin. You said remove the coin? Remove the coin. Just for a time. Just for a moment. Sheldon very slowly starts to try and lift the ne necklace off, the coin or off from around his neck. So you just take it and your fingers seem to just effortlessly fit in the gap of light and you just pry the mm. coin part away okay. and you look on the other side <coughs> and there's a carving there's a what sorry there's a carving you see some mountains, little jagged peaks, and behind them you see a tall tower-like structure that comes to four points on the top. There's no color, it's just carved into the coin. And realizing you are currently on a mount, you take a look and you see a large white tower. Remember. Are we here as you? 
Not exactly. But I need you to remember. Remember what is on the coin. Remember mountains, tower, four points. And you, if you must tell anyone, make sure it is someone you can trust. As I fear those who wish to take this from you are still close within reach. Why would they wish to take this, sir? I've carried this this long. I don't know what it is fully. Just know you must guard it. For it is the key to reveal what has been hidden here since before the fall. It's the one yeah. key they wish to have. So that they may control what happens next. Belden just nods his head. I understand. I will protect this with my life. There is but one that can truly help you. But you have to remember the tower. The tower with the four points between the two mountain peaks. And then you see... This seems the rocks, the very rocks before you move. And they come into place to that of a dragon. And the dragon lowers its head down to you. You must protect it. And it reaches up a claw again and taps the coin. And the coin inserts itself back into the necklace the same way it was before. Mm -hmm. And as the dragon takes a breath in, you see little sparks of lightning. And it slowly exhales. And you are back to sleep once more. Now I will need you to swap with our last party member. Okay. Hello. All right. You've enjoyed cooking for your new friends. Went off on a nice little heartwarming adventure. Enjoyed some stories or across a campfire. Food. Underneath the stars. A nice cozy tent to fall asleep in. Sleep takes you rather quickly. A rural kitchen. And you open your eyes and find yourself sitting. Before a grand hearth. Standing in front of it. Is an angelic figure. His wings folded back. He turns. And it's a very familiar face to you. Someone who has sent you on your path. Oh, is it me, boy? Ah! You have come to join me! Come! In a while. Let us cook. And he beckons to an apron. I will get up from. 
Get up from a fog, making my way over. Slightly confused. Where, where are we? <laughs> we are at my house. No, I... My place of comfort. Pictures. Oh, maybe I don't quite remember it the same. But thank you. Nods ahead. Come, let us let us cook together, and tell me what you have found so far on your journey. It is. It has been an unusual one. Um, a creature made of slime, caught Claire, Felden, this hulking man, uh, a, a little fellow, rather loud and rather obnoxious. Uh, Gen Gen Genevieve, who uh, like looks after the little one, that I so wish occasionally, and I fight the urge every moment to hit around the back of the head with a cast iron. But we get there. I know better than to give in to rage, especially when working in a kitchen. Stressful environments are all too common. As food is meant to bring warmth, not uh, burning. <laughs> Miles. Apart from that, I encountered a priestess who let us know about uh, the amulet that Felden carries, a cursed object. Uh, I've yet to learn more about it, but uh, apparently it's something important that we need to uh, understand. Um, when we got on our way, we encountered a tree with a, uh, a fairy inside. Uh, I tried to help. I ended up killing innocent creatures, mushroom people. I'm rather saddened by that. Looking a lot more solemn for a moment in, in regret. It wasn't my intention. I tried to free the fairy and it kind of went anywhere but the designated area. However, my cooking has been um, graciously, graciously received and it's one way to keep the little one's uh, attention away from destructive tendencies. Hmm. That's very good. Apart from that, I found some basil. Oh, fresh items are always nice. Just fresh is best. I'm not sure you know of Felden and Claire's traveling history. But it seems they've gone through quite a few I... companions along the way. Yes, including the old, um, of, including Mr. Kravik, from, from what I've heard, which was quite the surprise to me. I never thought he'd get this far. <laughs> hmm. Yes, it seems uh, he is, uh, the, the... residing at another tavern in Dim Meadow. Agreed to help out the newly one-eyed keeper there. One-eyed keeper? Yes, it seems uh, when the undead rose in the city, the keeper of the tavern, Goliath, normally, from what I've heard, quite peaceful. Decided to take up arms to protect his, uh, his plants and his pig. 
and lost an eye over it. It is a respectable stand, though. It is. You don't want to kill the pig too early. And it is your home, your hearth, your, your warmth, your family. Just be wary. Is he still alive? Yes, he is doing well. He was tended to rather quickly. Guards seem to have established a perimeter pretty quick, and even though Felden and Clan, their former companions, were there to help, seems trouble finds them where they tra where they go. So first the undead coming. Then the issues with potential demon lords that's still being investigated. Yeah, I was kind of wondering why I was seemed as suitable for this conquest. We we already faced a a a some sort of blood mage is I think Felden described mm. and um, I I I couldn't stand my own every swung swung knife swing missed every I I managed to hit hit it once I managed to hit one of the skeletons once but everything else fell short I, I I don't think I'm suitable for this. He stops. Why, why did you think I was the right one? He stops and kind of uh, leans forward a little bit. He puts a hand on your shoulder. You cannot expect to step in the kitchen the first time and be a master chef. Just as you cannot step into the fields of battle and expect to be a master at combat. These things take time. But what you offer is something none of the others can. You offer them, even if for a moment, some time of peace and calm and a good meal to go with it. Healing. In many ways. And we hope that with that healing, maybe you can heal the one that is cursed. In your own way. And after that, you feel a spark ignite inside yourself. And as you look down at these ingredients, your mind kind of goes to more ways you can use them than they normally would. No. What? It's good. Okay. He just smiles. Back. Have you have you given me knowledge of recipes from afar? I have done very little. It is you that have shown the courage and the potential for the catalyst of the spark within yourself. I would just help nudge it a little. Thank you. Thank you for helping me. I... I shall see that it's put to good use, and I shall try my best. 
As for the food, uh, I shall prepare you the fresh dish in the morning, unless you wish for me to aid in the kitchen now. We can finish this up. And when you go back, just kind of kind of lift his hand and wave it for a moment. When you go back, check your pack. And he turns back over and starts cutting up some more of the items. If you could prepare the broth, and he points over to some of the ingredients. Can you go about preparing a fine, hearty chicken soup? Just as my mother used to make. Chicken soup is good for the soul, they say. Get out his, his knife. The soul, the body, and the mind. Me. Now, as I said, he looks down, meal prep finished, meal enjoyed by the two of you. Well, I suppose it's time to return you. And then he lifts up his hand. Thank you for this time. And you fall back to sleep. I'm gonna actually have you stay here because I'm gonna get everybody now. Yay! <laughs> Cooking with pa with Papa Van Vanier. <laughs> oh. Welcome back, everyone. Mm. So you all wake up the next morning. Hello. Seems Nala and the toy maker watched you all through the night. What is it you all wish to do? With your various little adventures in the night. I'm going to rub my eyes. Sit up. Look towards my backpack. And just open up the lid of it just to peer in. Do you know that cautious look of you're not sure what exactly happened? You believe it, but you don't. Yep. Yeah. You find a jug that you don't remember packing in your backpack. Okay. Uh, I'll start the morning preparations for breakfast and I will set up the backpack next to it with the jug inside and then as I'm going along, I'll then pick up the jug to have a look. Just as if I'm... As if it was there all along, but still really slightly confused, but trying to hide it. <laughs> Alright. Uh, you take a little whiff, and it smells of dairy. Enough fresh milk. Wait. That was there the entire time. Yep, fresh, cold milk. You, uh, incorporate it into your meal plans a little bit, and as you pour some in, tilt the jug back up, and the jug is still full. You have an alchemy jug in your possession. Very sus. Very sus. <laughs> Very sus. Nope. Chicken soup, here we come. <laughs> Louis Pasteur who? Oh. 
Uh, I know I'm going to start, as I wake up, start breaking down uh, this, the little kind of where I had been posted up, sleeping, start packing up my stuff. Um, you know, pack a bit, my pipe, smoke it, to kind of become a person type, to become a halfling, an awake, alert halfling. Okay. I cautiously check to see if I can still see. As you cautiously go to open your eyes. You hear the familiar whisper in your head. The last lines you heard before falling back into your sleep. To be... To use darkness, you must be darkness. Everything is black. Oh no. Claire's eyes again? <laughs> That's fucked up. <laughs> Claire had a choice. I'm right. Claire made a choice and the dice made a choice. However, Claire. I think that growth stone was made too. Your face still feels the way it did before. You can still feel the eyes in your head. That's interesting. So they didn't go away. I'm just blind blind now. <laughs> Well, I guess my vision's gone again. But you just got it back. Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. Hearing Claire, oh. still this felt, Claire say this, Felden looks at her. Do I notice anything's off with her face? Like, is there anything on her face that she wouldn't realize that she needs to remove to see? No, you can see Claire's eyes look exactly the same they did yesterday. <laughs> that would be funny though. This has a blindfold on. <laughs> yeah. I can't see. Oh. Who put that there? <laughs> the Fae were involved. I had to ask. We walk around town. Why well, is Claire blindfolded? It's nothing I'm not used to. I, I know, but you were able to see. Do you still have your other senses? Like you did before? Or how are you now at sensing things if you cannot see now either? I'm going to put my, my hand to the ground and see if I can feel... Any vibrations? If you need to roll for it, I'm happy to give the help action by way of <laughs> jumping up and down where I'm standing. Does this help? Do I so feel that? You go to reach out. In the ways you used to. And 
don't quite seem to sense anything. Like, when you reach out to the ground, you can feel the ground, you just can't feel it the way you used to be able to feel it. But, as you go searching and try to grasp toward that feeling, you do notice a different sensation near the base of your feet. And it trails out behind you. What do you wish to do? can feel something behind me. Do you see anything? And I look behind Claire and start to walk around her. Too. How close are you walking to Claire? Um, I... Don't know how far apart we crashed. So, I mean, I haven't really got up and moved a whole lot. So, probably is 20 feet away from her, I guess, is how far we crashed. Okay. Claire, you don't feel anything different. However, Belden, you don't really see anything out of the ordinary. You see Claire standing there and see your shadow on the ground. As I'm starting to stir the oatmeal and get it ready for everyone to eat, I'm gonna I'm gonna then turn to have a just uh, just a general glance in Claire's direction. Okay, so you you see Claire just kind of standing, and Felden kind of doing a partial circle. Is everything okay? You lost too. my vision again. Yes. And now I can barely even feel anything in the ground anymore. So you've lost both senses. Hmm. I feel something behind me, though. I'm just gonna look intrigued to Felden, who was circling. Are you seeing anything? I'm not seeing anything, no. Is Claire's shadow looking normal? I look down at the shadow, and then I go walking towards the shadow to get closer towards it. Okay. How close do you walk to it? I'm going to say I'm probably like within five feet of her at this point. Okay. As Felton gets closer to you, Claire... You sense something touching the thing behind you, and you go to lash out at it, not knowing what it is. You try to snag at it, and now you can sense, by the way he's talking and moving, now you can sense where Felden is, even as he steps out of your shadow. I just felt you for a second, Felton. I was close to you. I can but... still feel you. Weird. 
Where did you just walk? Walked by your shadow? Hmm. I know this might be a strange question. What exactly happened in your sleep? So, wait a minute, Claire, you slept? Wait, Claire yeah. doesn't sleep? Yeah, I, I normally don't. Um, occasionally I fall unconscious, which is always a weird experience. She's normally our guard because she doesn't sleep. She just is present, so if she slept, what? Well, Right. I'm sorry, Claire. Oh, I I'm never tired, so, you know, it's an upside. But you said you did this time. Yeah. It's not natural sleep. I'm not even sure if I can call it sleep, per se. But... What I did experience was I saw my old master. He was a lot he was rather frail and he asked if I had if I wanted to know the truth about um him and I was in front of the old cottage that he owned, uh, and he told me it was a memory, and he, when I found him, he was talking to some demonic-looking creature, claimed it was the darkness, or that... Sebastian wanted to become the darkness or, or something to, like that. Um, and then it took over his body and his old body turned to ash as, as a new one formed. And before all of this, the This thing that looked like my master, it's said there'd be a price to pay for this, for knowing the truth. <laughs> and I'm guessing that was my sight. He also said something interesting, which is like, if I am to, to use the darkness... I have to be in darkness. Right. In Interesting. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, is there any tree lines nearby? I was thinking in the back of the wagon. I might be closer. What? Back of the wagon, a closer. Tree lines, getting her into the darkness, getting her into shadows. Well, I was more thinking the range of it, instead of it being a very close, confined space where your peripherals, in terms of just touch alone, could feel someone. Yeah, but we, if we test in the wagon, then we can go from there. I think we should all eat first before we start um, getting casting waters. Uh, I'm going to start spooning out some oatmeal flavored. Uh, enough for a bowl each plus one extra one that I'm going to place to one side and then dish it out and then give it to everyone. Okay. You're going to have to hand that to me. I can't feel you. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to bring players over and then uh, I'm going to 
with a glove on, obviously, just gently raise her hand to the bottom of the bowl and then have the spoon ready for her other hand. As he goes Thank to you. lift your hand, you can now sense where he is. As well. What's that? Claire can now sense where two of you are, currently. Oh. I can feel you now. Sure, I can... F when you touched my hand... Right. I'm then going to I'm going to leave the oatmeal in the spoon with Claire, and then I'm going to. Can you still? And I'm just going to start pacing away slowly. Just let me know when you can't. I'm just going to start taking paces away. All right. Five feet away. Is fine. Ten, fifteen, twenty. Still fine. Twenty-five. Thirty. Then nothing. Stop right there. Right, I stop. Uh, hit. and then I step back. All right, so I'm going to step deliberately out and then back in. Can you still see me now? Can't see anything. I can feel you now. Oh. You can all, you can only feel. So I basically stepped out past there, so I've outside the range and stepped back in. Yeah. But I can't see you now. Hearing his voice, you reach out toward him to see if you can feel him. Felden, since you're still behind. Claire, you see Claire's shadow start to stretch. It kind of stretches the opposite way it should be going. And that's when you see it too. Claire's that's shadow weird. stretching towards you. And you're looking at your own shadow and you see Claire's shadow kind of go up and touch your shadow. And Claire, now you can see him again. And as soon as you feel that connection and that sensation that you feel him, like, ah! And then the two of you see Claire's shadow just go right back to where it was. It can take some getting used to. Yeah, I'm not sure how to feel about this, in all honesty. I have a question. We must test this theory. If she can sense by the shadows, if everyone's in the shadow and she touches the shadow, can she sense everything in the shadow? Genevieve? What? I think the tree line might be the best bet, considering when we got closer, it automatically picked us up anyway. Right. Uh, how far away is the tree line? About 50 feet. And Genevieve, can we go stand in the shadow? Can we go stand in the shadow by the tree line? Be careful. Claire, can you follow me over this way? And I'm going to walk Claire, making sure we have a wide berth. So, so they don't touch each other, so they don't get in that th that range we found, figured out. Okay. Okay. Uh, before I get into the shadow, can I check to see if there's anything spooky right there? Probably wouldn't be a bad idea. You can do a nice uh, perception check. Mm. I'm, I'm going to go alongside Genevieve just so I'm with her, just in right. case. That hurts my feelings that I just did that. 
You're not. You're not alone. Seems fine. But I'm not actively looking. It's uh, fine. Yeah, seems fine to you. Got some birds chirping. You said it that way. I hate <laughs> that you said it that way. It seems. It seems. What's the likelihood of this being a mimic? Oh, pretty much like nothing. Yeah. Like billiards. Yeah, up. Oh. <laughs> Gram <laughs> the ground yeah, below you opens up. Shadow. Just kidding. Okay, you stand <laughs> on the tree line. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're just you're just chilling in the shade. So then we take Claire, take Claire over to the shadows and stick her. So get her over to the shadows. Okay, uh, shadows in the same. Claire, can you see if you can fear in the same area? They're connected. It's like all wooded areas. Okay, how far away from the others do you go? Probably fifty feet away, sixty feet. Okay, probably like. A little bit further away. Okay. 60 feet. A little bit. So, Claire, as soon as you step in the tree line, you can sense so many trees. Bushes. I think there might be a frog. About 20 feet away from you. <laughs> Maybe a fox. You're right there, Claire? Yeah. Wherever you just moved me, everything. Where is the, the shadows? Vivid. Let's start walking this way, and I just start walking closer, and let me know when something changes, and I just start walking towards Genevieve and Strat. The two of you are walking, and as you're walking forward, the things behind you kind of just disappear from your connection, and then new things appear ahead of you. And as you get within that range of the others, you can sense two humanoid figures staying about 30 feet away. Can I tell who's who? You're not quite familiar with the way they move quite yet because you spent most of the time in a wagon with each other. However, if you had to guess, you think you could make a fairly good guess of who was who. Just because their size is different from each other. Yes, drawers a, a tall one. So close that. Uh, can you see anything? I think I see the two of you. That Genevieve and Thor. Yep. You'd have a try. Sorry? Oh. You can oh, sense no. the shit. You but now sense the same. Was it a 30 foot range just like the connection across light ground? It's still the same. Yes. The same range, but she's saying she can sense everything right now. Not just what crosses the shadow. Anything connected to the shadow. She was saying back there she could sense frogs, foxes, all the trees, bushes. It's like she could see everything in that range of round. So that's it. You can see in dark. Well, you see through darkness. You sense the darkness. You are the darkness. It's not really sight. But it's similar to when I could feel the vibrations in the ground. Question. 
can she sense stuff flying in the shadows? If it casts a shadow. It have to be night. She can sense the movement of a shadow, hmm? but wouldn't know how high up it was. So she'd know there's something there at least, but wouldn't know. But like, if exactly there's where. What I'm saying is like in this forest area that we can that we're in right now, and she has the frog jumping. Could she sense the frog jumping, or only when it's on the ground? She could sense it moving. Because the shadow would still be cast, so she could sense it the whole path. But she wouldn't know if it was jumping. But or she not. no longer has connection. She no longer. And that's why I was wondering. It doesn't have to be connected to the ground. The more no. shadows that are around, the more detailed the image. Yes. Essentially, if the shadows touch, hmm? and the shadows are touching in some way her shadow within that range, she can. Mm -hmm. She can she see can... it. So instead of tremor sense, it's shadow sense. And the more... Right. <laughs> Interesting. I've lost a bit of distance, but... I can... S if it casts a shadow, I can sense it, apparently. Which means we'll have to have a light source with us at all times. Why? I think it's the opposite. The, the lack darkness of light creates a shadow. Huh? The lack of light creates a shadow. But if there's no light, there's only darkness. So then there is no shadow. <laughs> this is a hypothetical that we will have to test. Come now. Well, we will have to test, but we'll have to have it. That's what I'm saying. If there's nothing to create the shadow and we're pitch black, we'll all be yes, blind. I can create light. Don't worry about that. If that's the case, I'm just as I'm just as poor, poor off as all of you in the dark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Felden turns starts to walk. Huh? Felden turns and starts walking back to the wagon. Hmm. <laughs> Keep up, Claire. Yes. Uh, uh, okay. As soon as we get without a range, it's going to be hard for you to find us again. We're going to have to find some way for you to keep a track with us. Or find some way for you to create a bigger shadow. Just a patch of rope. Swing it around the top of your head. Just, just bulk up. Just bulk up, Claire. You know... <laughs> Make sure you're pumping that iron, getting Wait. your protein. Big Hang shadow. on a minute. Idea. Uh, I'm gonna attach a rope to Claire, just to just to a hand, or just have Claire hold the rope, okay. and I'm just gonna trail it out because it's fifty foot of rope. Now, because that's attached to Claire, and I've let go, is it within thirty feet of that rope? But her range is still only thirty feet. Yeah. 30, 30 feet from her. <laughs> from oh, her. Oh. Set it on her. <laughs> yeah. But her range Thanks. is only 30 feet. So, so she can sense 30 feet That's of the rope. That's idea. Or... But I don't think this is the most convenient thing in the world. It was no idea. Oh, I'm, 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 I appreciate it. So, hang on a minute. I cast light on the rope. So now it's bright. Yep. So now it's bright, so there is no shadow. Can she still detect us within 30 feet? So, Claire, all your all your uh, friends just disappear. And everything else is poof, gone. Oh, uh, where'd you guys go? <laughs> I don't know. <sighs> I dispel light. Right, they're still gone. The, mm -hmm. the connection has just to reconnect to all of us. <laughs> the connection has been severed. Is if we are needing to see, we cast light. We've disappeared for her. 
Ja. <laughs> They're just depressed now. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna walk up to Claire so I've actually the shadow reconnects so she can see me again. I'm just coming close so you can see me again. I am sorry about this, but it's it's going to be difficult and we'll think of a way around it. Okay. I have an idea. We'll have to talk to the toy maker if he knows where we can find one. But we'll need to get a light piece of cloth and get you a massive sunbrella. Ooh, mm -hmm. like a parasol. Yes. But, no, oh, oh, no, okay. Because then it's a bigger shadow, I get that. I see what you're saying. So if we want to light a light so we can see, we have to hold it above the umbrella, Or we put a I'm rock just, on top of the umbrella. I'm just thinking in general, in the middle of the day, she she won't have a shadow. Ooh. She won't be able to see in the middle of the day. But as it gets closer to nightfall, her vision is going to be amazing. If all it takes is darkness. I'm gonna try something. Just okay. What are you gonna try? Works. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try and ex extend my my manipulate my shadow. See if I can get like a thirty foot circle going. See how far that can go. All right. So you start to sense your shadow. Sense it at the bottom of your feet. You start to move it. You try to stretch it out without really any direction and it goes a little bit but it's really hard to manipulate it in this sort of way and then you hear your friends talking to each other and thinking ideas out and your your mind starts to connect to that like oh that's Felden's voice right now and as your mind's connecting to that the shadow starts to go toward where the voice was I want to try something. Okay. Can I try something? Sure. Um. Okay. I'm going to take my hat off and sort of dust it on my knee and then pull it up over like that. And I'm going to use disguise self. And um, I'm gonna tr I'm gonna try to look like Felden. Oh god. Okay. And then I'm gonna walk through the shadow to see if Claire can can clock it. Okay. Does this guy self change your height? I mean, they're yeah, relatively the same height. So. Oh. Hey, Claire, as you're stretching your shadow Look toward you knowing how to math. Felden. You sense another presence walk through your shadow, and now you are connected to them. Mm. Relatively the same size as Felden. Do I know who it, who it is? It's relatively the same size as Felden, but you were just reaching for Felden and hadn't gotten there yet. Hmm. And you only know of one other halfling in the area right now. Is that you, Genevieve? Out of character, to clarify, because it's been a while since I've used this, uh, does it also disguise my voice or no? Would I have to make a skill check for that? Just appearance. Okay, I'm going to attempt to imitate Felden. Okay. And I want to say, Claire, it's me. Okay. 
Okay. Deception with disadvantage. Because Claire and Felden have spent a lot of time together. With disadvantage? Yep. Uh, okay. Okay. So, how do I roll with... So, you said deception? Yep. So, I roll... I just roll it twice? Yep. Press control. Oh. I already did one... Oh, you got three up Doesn't there. Matter. Doesn't matter. Uh, no, you only get two. Yeah, because one more oh, yeah. perception from earlier. Yeah. It's the same number. Um, I'm not even going to have you roll for this, Claire. You know that's not Felden. <laughs> <laughs> You've spent enough time around yeah, Felden. Do I hear this? Yes. Do it. Do, can I, do I hear this going on? Yes, you do. Do I really sound like that? <laughs> you sound exactly like this. There's no way I sound like that. No, he doesn't. Would, would I be able to distinguish between the Felden and the fake Felden? Ooh. In voice. Since he, since Tor hasn't spent enough time with Felden, that's a good one. Uh, you have to roll Insight. See if you can okay. distinguish the two. Would I have? Would I re-roll? Yes, you can re-roll re your deception. Because... Okay. Would that be just a straight roll? Straight roll. Oh, geez. Good luck. I don't think it's gonna matter. <laughs> wait! 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 Close, but no. Wait a minute. Wait. Who did? Question. Yes. Oh, okay, yep. You, you need a 5 on a d4. <laughs> At least. No, you need a 6 on a d4. <laughs> um, I know what you're thinking. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you could have got it handed yourself. <laughs> yeah, but I'm saving that for a rainy day. Yep. Because I just woke up. Yeah, so you know it's not Felden either, because you're like, so pretty sure Felden was standing there. And that Felden's still standing over there. So that means this Felden is not Felden. Oh no. So does she. Uh, does she... How I well is the disguise? I was, the disguise. I was checking the voice. <laughs> How well is the disguise? Really well. I just noticed. I just noticed something. Well, this guy's is pretty spot on. Felden's not very smart. Oh. Huh? <laughs> I would like to do a perception check to see if Felden notices if the other Felden has the necklace. Oh yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Go for it. So, do a perception so check. So I do have the necklace as well. You do. Let's see if Felden realizes that you have the necklace. Are you actively looking for it? Yes. Then roll. Roll again. You have advantage. Let me see. Well, you know, you don't really wear anything that would block it, so I say a 10's good. No, I would. Oh, no. Because all you have is the apron, and the necklace is pretty out there. Yeah, it is. Yep. And Genevieve wouldn't know to hide it, so... No, she wouldn't. Oh no. That's mine! <laughs> Give it back! <laughs> and Felden charges after and pulls his longsword. Uh, uncanny dodge. He hasn't done anything yet. 
I know, but I'm just preparing that in my brain. Like, that's I'm, about to be a thing. I'm gonna cast Shield of Faith on the fake Felden. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't have a longsword anymore. It's gonna be the Warhammer. And okay. swing to attack. Because I can already see where this is going. Yep, that hits. What's your AC? Oh, the what, what's... With that, it's 15. So yeah, that hits. Uncanny dodge. Which does what? Uncanny dodge. Which does what? Okay, so Un that is when an attacker that you can see hits you hits you with an attack, uh, you can use your reaction to half the tax damage against you. All right, that will count. So roll the damage. That's the seven. That's the one-handed. Okay, so you'll take three points of damage. Give me my necklace back! Now, Felden, you have two attacks per round. Felden! You fool! How dare you? Just putting that out there. No, he would use them both. Oh. Second one will miss. Yeah. Swings ride. Be happy. He'd be happy how he wouldn't have used the other one. Just saying. All right, Jimmy, what do you do? So, at this. I'm gonna drop the disguise. Okay. And then I'm gonna scold Felden. Where'd I go? Felden. You literally just Where watched me do that. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I was facing that way. <laughs> I saw someone with a hat turn off, and next thing I know, I'm running across the... Wait a minute. How many of us are wearing hats, real quick? Just want to ask that. I, I just thought of this. How could I, I be watching know. myself run across the field? <laughs> Hold on, I just need you to, to get better. Just, just, the, just, just be better. face rub. I can't. My temple is pounding. <laughs> Genevieve's temples are pounding. It's going to be a long day and I can already tell. There's just certain things of mine you just don't touch mm -hmm. or mess with, okay? I never but... touched your stuff. <laughs> yeah, but you messed with one. What? No, I didn't. You took my necklace. Really? So, do you no longer have it? I have it, but you had it right, too. So how, did, so how did I have it if you had it? But you had it too. There was two no. of them. There should only be Felden, one. Felden, Felden. Genevieve. I need... Was there more than one in appearance? Was there more than one here? Right, so... so I know I'm a good... Listen, I know I'm I'm a good pickpocket. I know that I can grab whatever I need to grab, and I'm usually pretty good at not getting caught. I have yet to master doing that from several feet away. At no point did I take your necklace. I understand it seems you're pretty sentimentally attached to it. I yes, yes, will hey. not mention it to Hey You when they wake up. Yeah. We're just going to not, nobody mention the necklace. We don't. My, the necklace. I need to sit down. Do you need help? <laughs> so, if Felton, yes. That frightful display, why is that necklace so. Almost important that you nearly just laid someone out flat. Because it's my necklace. Yes. We've tried this before. He's not going to tell you. Right. If I wanted to see it, if I wanted to see if I could. 
figure it out, but not like not hands on investigate because this dude just came at me with a war hammer and hit me. Um, <laughs> but and like, reminder that that's not the strongest weapon in the arsenal. That's the left. So, so the necklace is visible because it was visible on me. It's always right? visible. It's never been hidden. It's always right, visible. Okay. So, I guess would it be like a visual in investigation check? Or what are you yeah, trying to I, I'm investigate? Trying to like look at it to see if like I can figure out. I'm trying to look at the the necklace to see if there's any markings or anything familiar, any type of something that I might recognize to see if maybe if I can understand why like what its value is. Uh, okay, you can do an investigation. I guess. Okay. Now, here's a stupid question, and you are well within your right to tell me absolutely not, Bunny. Um, since I have been known to be uh, shady, if you will, uh, would it be possible for me to get advantage on that investigation? Because I am used to being able to size up how much jewelry will fetch on an open market from experience. Again, you have every right to tell me no. Hmm. I'm going to say, you know, it is a necklace. I'll say yes. Okay. And you said to c hit hold control when I click it? Uh, contr control for disadvantage, shift for advantage. You can send that to me directly if you'd like. I'll I'll just tell you it. Uh, if I hit it, it it uh looks like it's worth maybe five gold. Seems like a basic kind of copperish necklace. So probably some sentimental nonsense. Okay. Cool. Looks like a basic copper necklace with a like a old coin design. Might might be able to might be able to talk someone into like the old coin stuff. Might be able to talk to getting ten out of them, maybe twelve. But yeah, so long as the coin's not been drilled. If it's been drilled, I'm gonna have to finagle it. Yeah. As you look at the coin, you're like. Maybe the coin will be worth more. You don't know. You haven't seen a coin like that before. It's about, mm. about this big. It's a very large coin. Okay. So old money before... Okay. Older money. I'm going to just stroll past Felden. I'll tap on the shoulder. Calm down next time and think about it. And just before I leave, I'm going to mutter a, a very brief incantation on him. Remove curse targeting Felden himself. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to go back to the campfire. I'm going to try and get honey out of the jug. Uh, and start preparing pastries and marinating meat. Alright, what's everybody else doing? I'm gonna go check to see if Heyu's woken up yet. Probably not. They were... They were pretty wound up after we couldn't light the forest on fire, so... Yeah. Uh, you go check on Heyu. Heyu's passed right out. Kinda gurgling. In their sleep, but you're used Got to the that. Drool going down. Yep. Yeah. It's always a mystery. Where does the drool end and their skin start? You don't know. I've stopped even tr questioning it at this point. AU is just 100% drool. <laughs> Stop! We don't bully. Unless we do. 
So we should probably get ready to to start mm -hmm. moving. Yeah. Now that we've Ellen. got everything figured out. Yeah. Belden will turn and head back and help try and help Strott clean up the campsite and get ready to start moving. All right. Hey, can I borrow one of you? Uh, hey, you is not waking up. Uh, and the last time I tried to pick them up, uh, when they were this deep in sleep, uh, accidentally dropped them. I know a good trick for this. <laughs> Oh no. Felden goes to the back of the thread. <laughs> grabs a uh, 55 gallon barrel, a big barrel out of the back, and sets it on the ground. Oh, no. You should fit in here. <laughs> hey, you so will. He rolls it over by hey, the barrel. That's the barrel up. He just. Grabs Hey You, picks him up, and just sets him in there. Goes to grab the lid and stops and wait, thinks about it, waits. <laughs> nah, he don't deserve the lid. Puts the lid down and just picks the barrel up and carries the barrel back and sets it in the back of the wagon. And puts the <laughs> Secures the barrel in the back of the wagon. Appreciate you. Spins it around a little bit. <laughs> And then stamped on the side of the barrel, it says property of Krenovic. <laughs> <laughs> you stole his stamp. <laughs> it was his barrel. What are you talking about? Oh, I thought you, you said it was stamped on it. You stamped no. it. No, the barrel is stamped property of Ken Krenovic. Oh. I haven't seen that stamp on a lot of your stuff. Did you he steal the barrel from it? Were you the ones that raided his tent? He traveled with us. I and threw still him in have his barrels. He stayed in that barrel. I threw him in that barrel. I don't know how many times because he couldn't keep in control of himself. I figured one troublemaker went in a barrel. The other troublemaker can go in the barrel. We'll just make it the running joke. <laughs> Where do you put a troublemaker? Put him in the barrel. <laughs> I mean... I'm coming around to the idea rather swiftly. <laughs> if they get too out of hand, we put the lid on the barrel. We know where they're at. Hey, There's no. an air hole in it. There's an air hole in it. There's air. I'm not I'm not into that. No. Without the yeah. lid for now is fine. We're not going to make a... a habit of putting hey you in a barrel. We're but... not going to. It's fine for now cuz it'll be funny. But you have any you gotta use that bit sparingly, okay? Felden goes in and pulls it into his trunk and pulls out a harness that fits around the barrel. How do you think we carry people around and just put the harness on the ground that fits around the barrel? Like a little backpack. Exactly! I could have used this earlier. A barrel backpack? You don't have, you don't have to make it a, ha a habit. Felden already has one. Thank you, Claire. Oh, what would that be? <laughs> and with that, Bellin. the group makes their way. And I'll say for uh, swiftness sake, you next time we meet will be after the three days of the ward has worn off. So it'll be three days later. Okay. And you'll have just woken up once more and started your journey. It was nice to have three days of peaceful road travel, just occasional travelers passing by. Don't learn any news that is interesting. Just average average stuff doesn't seem nearly as many troubles are coming 
uh, from this area of the world than where you left. But that's where we'll end it for tonight, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we'll be live again in a few weeks. Be sure to check out our merch and the like. Uh, if you have any questions you have for the group or myself about our experiences in this game or any D&D experiences, feel free to leave them in the comments when, when and if you watch this on YouTube. Uh, we would like to do some Q&A sessions at some point, so be sure to leave those questions for us. And thank you for being here. And be sure that until next time, all your adventures are made of dice and Kim. Thank you.